Hey everybody, today I'm going to be creating a CocoaPod library from start to finish, um, creating the project from scratch and publishing it and using it into a iOS project. Here we are, CocoaPods.org, and um, to learn how to do this, I did use the CocoaPods uh, official guide, which worked pretty well. You go to CocoaPods.org, go to Guides, Making a CocoaPod. I'll be walking you through that today. So, to give you an idea of what we're going to be building today, I have this project I call iOS Blanky, hosted here on GitHub. What iOS Blanky is, it's a kind of a template project that I created to kickstart my iOS development. Um, I have the you know the same boilerplate code that I write, the same tools that I write. Instead of creating a new Xcode project and having to add all these tools, I can just create. I can just copy this template project and kickstart the development right away. So go ahead and use iOS Blanky and tell me what you think. So here's iOS Blanky open inside of Xcode. And today I'm going to be pulling out some of the code from iOS Blanky and creating a new library for it actually. So this is a great use case for CocoaPods. I have this I have this code, um, no scroll collection view, no scroll um, table view, rounded UI, rounded UI image view, and UI checkbox. All of these files that I use in different projects, um, and right now, I actually have, it's kind of whenever I create a new iOS app from iOS Blanky is the starting template, template I will actually, it kind of creates a snapshot of where those files were at that point. So whenever I create a new copy of iOS Blanky, I have no scroll table view where it is that at that point. And then let's say I you know I create three apps. And then the fourth one I decide to go back into no scroll table view and fix a bug I found. Add a new feature, delete some, update the file some way, somehow, and now I have to go back and copy and paste the new no scroll table view into all of the different projects that I had previously created. Not very efficient, really hard to manage, figuring out what version is what. I have no idea. It takes a while, and I have no idea what version one of the projects has. I'm going to create a CocoaPod library today to fix that problem. Great use. All right, so first things first. First things first, we need to actually have CocoaPods installed. I'm going to assume you already have this done, but in case you don't, it's gem, install, CocoaPods, okay? I had to do sudo on my Mac. You might not have to. So let's assume you already have that installed. And what CocoaPods does is it installs the program Pod on your computer. Um, so let's create. Let's actually, you know, create the the new project. So it's gonna be Pod lib create iOS views is the one I'm gonna be creating today. And what's really cool, this is actually a CocoaPods program pod lib create that simply creates the structure for creating a new Cocoa Pods lib very very quick to get you up and running so it's going to um, ask you some questions um, wants to know what the language do you want to use I'm going to use Swift so I can just hit enter would you like to include a demo application um, I like to yes and then which testing frameworks do you want to use um, I'm going to say no to each of these. Uh, we can you can run over those some other time. I'm not going to do that in this um, walkthrough today. So what has happened now is I have answered the questions Swift, yes, none, no, and it actually creates the project for me and it opens it up into Xcode. So here we are. Um, if you are at this, this may not pop up for you if you're viewing this farther along in the future, but this this is popping up because Xcode wants to convert my project to Swift 3. So yeah, I found it's going to update my app, app delegate and test file. Okay, no big deal. Okay, so we just created the project using CocoaPods. Now we want to take a step back and let's create let's create a new github repo why are we creating a new github repo uh, cocoapods actually 
takes your finds your source code that is hosted in a Git repository, and that's what it uses to uh, locate your code. So where we need to tell CocoaPods where it's located and have some place to host it. Uh, so we're going to create the repository here on GitHub, publicly host it, um, so that way um, CocoaPods can find it, create the build, install it for other people. Um, and there actually is a way, if you'd like to create, to make your code private, um, you are able to do that. I'm not going to cover it in this walkthrough. Boilerplate views for iOS apps. Um, go ahead and just leave these blank because these have actually been created for us already. Excellent. So I just, um, we're going to follow the directions here on GitHub for pushing an existing repository. Um, so we just need to follow these two lines, pretty simple. And then um, I actually need to do a commit. So get to add, get commit, create bear project via pod create lib. Now we are going to do like it says here and push it up there once it is done do a refresh here is our code as it stands right now awesome really the base has now been set for the library we have created the CocoaPods library there's no code in it right now but we've created it and we have created the github library where we're going to be hosting the source code awesome it's time to actually build the, actually put our code into CocoaPods. So here I am again in Xcode with the iOS views project created. And um, let's walk you through a little bit of the structure here. So here's the CocoaPods metadata. And I'm going to be walking through these. This is the license. CocoaPods requires you have a license, a source code license for your project. Uh, by default, it uses the MIT license. I always use it anyway. It's fine the way it is. We can leave it. Here's the README. This is actually created for us by default. Um, and go ahead and I would go through this and add some more directions to it, explaining what your project is, um, how to use it, why it's awesome, typical README stuff. This right here, very, very important piece. This is telling CocoaPods right here what your project is, what version it is. Essentially, it's all the metadata that CocoaPods requires in order to actually create a library and have other people use this project. Um, so here we are. It's the name of the project, iOS Views is what I'm going to be naming it. Um, I always like to start with 0.1.0 for the initial version code. And then we have a summary. We need to go through and edit this. So what is the summary? Boilerplate UI views for kickstarting iOS apps. Great. Now we come here to the description. And description needs to just be more of the summary. This kind of gives you an idea of what you should be writing. So what does this thing do? Why do you write it? What's the focus of this? Install library into project. Never have to write this generic code again. Homepage. By default, it assumes we're using GitHub. So I am, this is actually the homepage for our GitHub repository. Screenshots, I'm going to keep commented for now. Um, this is where the license, again, this is required. So I'm saying I am using the MIT license, and the file is located here. Um, I am the author. Change this here. Um, don't touch anything else. Um, I'm going to keep the social commented again. I'm not going to create a social media URL just for this little project. Um, keep everything else the same here. 
keep everything else the same. Down here, s.frameworks, I am going to be using UI kit. So I do need to keep this. I am going to actually uncomment that and include that here. And then s.dependencies. I'm not going to require any dependencies here, but right here is where you can actually include other dependencies, other CocoaPods actually, that your CocoaPod requires. So what you can do is uncomment this line and you can enter in a CocoaPod version. So AF networking, it's an objective C library. And then it's gonna be version 2.3 you want to install. Then after you add that, you're gonna to want to, instead of the repository for iOS views, pod install. And it's actually gonna install a dependency for you. If you want multiple, you're gonna copy that line and just add another one. So let's say you want to do Realm Swift and then enter the version code. But again, I'm not going to require any for this project, so I'm going to comment that out. And really, the, the pod spec is, is good to go right now. We just edited the pod spec file. We're going to actually run another program, another command from CocoaPods that is going to run lint over the pod spec to make sure that actually validates the requirements for CocoaPods so we can actually publish this thing. It's going to be pod lib lint telling us to run the lint program on the lib and then we have to give it the pod spec file. Okay, so right now we have to just give it a few seconds but it is validating. It's going to do things uh, making sure you do have a license specified and it can find the file. Making sure that you do have a GitHub repository specified, um, that it, the source code is hosted somewhere, um, the author is specified, the target is specified. To make sure that everything is required inside of here. And you should see, if you followed everything correctly, you should see the green. If not, it, it's pretty good at telling you the warnings and of what's, what's wrong. Great. Let's go back here. So pod spec metadata we are done with. Example for IS views. This right here is actually launch screen, assets, storyboard, view controller, app delegate, all these files for actually having a example project. We're gonna leave the demo project. We're gonna leave that there for now. Tests. Um, this is for writing tests for your project. Products, don't worry about this. Pods, don't worry about this. Frameworks, don't worry about this, okay? These are all CocoaPod specific. Then we see, here's the pod file. So if you're used to using CocoaPods, you know what the, co you know what the pod file is. The pod file is specifying the dependencies that you want to use inside of your project. So if you open this up, you can actually see this is the pod file for the, your example app and it is requiring the iOS views project. Interesting. So we can just leave that there because that allows us to go ahead and build and run this app, the demo app, and it's gonna be using your iOS views project. Okay, finally, this is the magic of and what makes your CocoaPod unique, the source code. See this folder called development pods iOS views, iOS views, classes. There it is. This file called replace me. Every, you're going to put all of your source code inside of the classes directory. And that is going to be where all your source, co source code is, um, is going to be located. Leave these alone. You're not going to be needing them. CocoaPod specific again. So here we are. We're, we are actually finally ready to add our source code. Get rid of the replace me. You're not going to need it. So let's go back to here. We're here at iOS blanky. And like I said a while back, we're going to be pulling out this code and putting it inside of our new CocoaPods library. No scroll collection view. Let's create a new group called UI collection view. And we're creating a new file. Swift, views, classes. I like to create everything inside its own directory. And then 
just copy and paste it like that. And we actually, exciting, we get to delete this because we will be adding it back later once we install Cocopods library. Group UI table view. Awesome. We have now added these two files that we're going to be using. Now let me, this is one very important thing, since we are using Swift 3. Right now, by default, Swift 3 is um, not actually, if we were to import this code the way it is now into our project, another project of ours, we'd actually not be able to use no scroll table view because it's not public to us. So for every time that you declare a new class, you must specify it as public. For every variable, if you want to make the variable public, public make sure it's public. Okay. For every enumeration, for every function, you need to make sure they're all public. Excuse all of the all of the parts that you do want to expose to the end user of the library. Make sure they are public. So Swift three, so you can actually expose them in Swift three. So I'm going to go ahead and. Um, add these other two files. I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, we have now added all of the UI views that I want to. This is really, for now, all of the code that I'm okay with adding to this CocoaPods library. Uh, that was really the hardest part. Um, getting, like we, we created the whole base structure. We added all of our code, because now we're ready to share it with the world. I'm actually going to um, I'm actually going to go into iOS Blanky and I am actually going to tell it locally where this project is installed. And there it is, so you can see, installing iOS views. There you go. Um, I just was, so I remember iOS Blanky, the project that we were in here, that we deleted all of the code from. So I went into that, I am, I am inside of that directory here. And I did, and I used nano text editor to go into pod file. I actually added this line of code right here. Pod iOS views, the name of the CocoaPods library. And I specify path equals um, my home directory code iOS views because that is where it's located. Right here, see? So that's, I'm, I'm telling it, I'm using this right here to locally find because I don't want to push it up to GitHub yet just in case it's broken. I, can, I have time to fix it now before I push it up to the rest of the world. And then I do a pod install, which runs through and installs everything. And I already did this. So here I am. I just created, I opened it up again. Here under, I was blanky, general. And you should now see under workspace, iosviews.framework. Adding a framework just like we always do. We've now added it. I just opened main view controller from iOS Blanky project. Just, I'm just showing, opening up a generic file showing you uh, that I have successfully um, imported the iOS views CocoaPods library and I'm able to reference the code that's inside of it. I can 
import iOS views library. And I'm just going to create a variable, some generic view to show you that I can indeed access it. Private var foo rounded image view rounded UI image view. There. That code is located inside of our CocoaPods library that we created. Awesome. I would recommend doing more testing as far as um, actually inside of your CocoaPods project here, and I was views CocoaPods project, go inside of the example, actually add the code to it, play around with it a bit. Um, try it out again locally with your projects to see it working, and we're going to move on to the next step. That is publishing it to the world. There are two steps to publishing a CocoaPod to the world. Number one, creating a Git release, a GitHub release. And then we will be actually telling CocoaPods to publish it and push it out. First step, let's do a Git status. Okay. So I need to do a git commit to push everything up. Um, commit add UI classes for table view, collection view, uh, and a couple UI views. Push it up to the GitHub repo. And now we have get, do a get status. We are clean. Everything is pushed up. Now we do a get tag 0 0.1.0. That get tag, the version code, needs to match the same version code as we have in our pod spec. So I have 0 0.1.0. I need to have 0 0.1.0 here. And I like to add dash A at the end, which allows me to add notes to this release. I like to add notes for release notes purposes. Add rounded UI image view, no scroll collection view, no scroll table view, and UI checkbox to project. And then get push tags, which pushes up all of the tags to GitHub. Awesome. We have created a release. Final step. We need to push it up to CocoaPods. And to do that, we're going to be using another, indeed, CocoaPods command, pod trunk. This is actually what we use to push it all up. Uh, so we're going to say, if, if this is the first time using CocoaPods on your computer, you need to register a session to your computer, which means CocoaPod trunk. The command is going to be pod trunk register your email, then a quote your name, unquote, description, and put in a little description. I, I just use generic MacBook Pro to, to show them on my Mac today. And then we'd hit enter. What that's going to do is it's going to send you an email to whatever one you specify. You need to go to your email client, open that email, click the verify link, and that will register your computer in your session. Um, so that allows you to now associate and push projects up from that email address. So we're going to do a pod trunk push. So you can see it found the spec file, iosviews.podspec, and it is actually pushing up to CocoaPods now as we speak. It's doing a little more validation of our pod spec file to make sure that it still is verified that it works. We passed. 
it's updating our um, master spec file here. Cocopods is just doing its thing. And there we are, check it out. Congratulations, iOS views 0.1.0 successfully published. So if we go here to this link, here it is in cocopods.org. Here we are, iOS views. And like it says, if we want to use iOS views in our project, we had to include it here. So here we are, back in iOS blanky, nano pod file. Let's uh let's get rid of let's get rid of um, this line we have here that specifies the local path. Let's actually use the real repo. So here I'm saying pod iOS views, comma, specifying the version code just like I am for every other project here. Pod install. There we go. We have found iOS views and we have installed it to our iOS Blanky project. Open up iOS Blanky workspace inside of Xcode. Go down to in our targets, general, scroll to the bottom. There's iOS views framework, add. Beautiful. And that is it. That is how you create a CocoaPods library. That is how you publish it to GitHub publish it to um, cocopods.org and allow you to use it all across your different projects. That is it. We have created a iOS library, a, a Swift iOS library from start to finish and released it to CocoaPods and we are using it in iOS Blanky. Thanks for the time everybody. Um, this video actually goes along with a blog post that I created talking about my very first CocoaPods library I created. I'm going to put a link here for you to be able to check it out. Um, please check it out. And if you use this video and create your own CocoaPods library, please email me or tweet me and talk about it because I want to know what you create. Um, I would love to hear all different libraries you create and check out mine as well.